the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus answered the chief priests and the elders of the people in parables, saying, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a marriage feast for his son and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the marriage feast. But they would not come. Again he sent other servants saying, Tell those who are invited, Behold, I have made ready my dinner, my oxen and my fat cows are killed, and everything is ready, come to the marriage feast. But they made light of it and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully and killed them. The king was angry and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the thoroughfares and invite to the marriage feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. The Gospel of the Lord Please be with you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, I am very consoled to see so many of you this evening for the Holy Mass. You could have done many other things. Many this evening are continuing to watch TV programs because one day, holiday, they want to have the joy of watching the program of their choice. You have foregone such a joy. Or some others would have gone out with some friends to the restaurant of their choice or to spend time relaxing. The very fact of your coming to this church, to this place of grace, means that still God has a place in your life. I know it means a lot of sacrifice to come here. You believe in God. You trust in God. In today's second reading, St. Paul says, I know how to live in abundance and how to live in misery. He goes on to say, I can do everything in Jesus Christ who strengthens me. And he tells the people, but still, you people have done quite a lot for me, having compassion towards me. May the Lord fill you with so many blessings. May the Lord supply you all that you need. My dear brothers and sisters, believe today. Happy that you all believe that the Lord alone can give you strength. The Lord alone can supply what you need. The fact of gathering in this place of place signifies this, my dear brothers and sisters. 
I really encourage you to continue to do the same. Give to God His place. One hour per day. One hour in the week, you should be generous to give. 24 hours a day. And then, seven days a week. Give sufficient time for God. Today actually, the Lord is telling us, you have to give primacy to God. We come to the gospel of today. It is really shocking that some of them, or a good number of them, despise the invitation of the king. A chance of a lifetime to participate in the wedding feast of the son of the king. But then, the gospel tells them, tells us, they made light of it. They gave excuses for not going for the banquet. They said they have their own business. Today, you have it read from the Gospel of Matthew, 22nd chapter. The same passage is also found in Gospel of Luke, 14th chapter. There it is more interesting and elaborate. One of them says, I have bought five pair of oxen. I have to see how they are moving about. I have to train them. I cannot come. Another says, I have bought a new piece of land. I have to go and see that first. King, I am not coming to your son's wedding feast. I am not coming. I have something more important to do. That is going and visiting the new piece of land that I have bought. And the third one says, no, I cannot come. I am newly married. I have to be with my wife. I will not come. Each one giving their own excuses for despising the invitation of the Lord. Today also, we should feel pity for people who do not want to listen to the word of God. The feast of the word of God who do not want to be fed by the body and blood of the Lord. They think they are busy so many times, as we ourselves would have done so many times. Give primacy to God. We are all called to the wedding feast of the Lord. Today's first reading very beautifully says, when you come to the feast of the Lord, He will take away, wipe away all the tears. He will give you strength. That's it. Primacy to God in your life. What is life so full of cares if you don't have time to stand and stand? If you don't have time for reflection, recollection, short moments of prayer, what is this life? It's so meaningless. Trust in God, my dear brothers and sisters. I plead with you. Trust in God. Maybe all your sufferings are not removed immediately as you expect. God's calendar is different from your calendar. But you will see the result. You will have enough courage to bear all your pains and sufferings. Sufferings may not disappear all of a sudden. But even amidst your suffering, the Lord will give you peace of mind. If only you approach Him. Above all, giving primacy to God. They made light of it. They gave excuses. What are your priorities? First priority is to God. Is to God. Every day, every week at least, your priority is to God. The Lord alone can strengthen us. Human beings cannot help us. As the psalmist says, put no trust in princes, in mortal men in whom there is no help. Take their breath, they return to play, and their plans that day come to nothing. Put no trust in princes. Don't trust people. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. The plans of people will come to nothing. We have to go a step further. What are our priorities in your own family? Next to God, your own spouse comes in your life. Your husband, your wife, your children, your parents, do you give sufficient time for them? 
do you give sufficient time for them next to them you are there for your family members some of the people consider their work more important than the family then the family comes to nothing it is crashing they come to have it your work is important all right but your family is much more important than your work what are your priorities and then even with regard to doing things doing things how do you devote your time i have put up a beautiful quotation in the seminary it goes like this we all have something in common with all the great persons we all have something in common with all the great persons what is it we have something in common with mother teresa we have something in common with pope francis we have something in common with mahatma gandhi what is it a 24 hour day they also had a 24 hour day we also have a 24 hour day it is how we make use of it that makes all the difference how we make use of our time that makes all the difference a seventh standard teacher brought a jar to her class and asked the children to bring some stones to be put in the jar the jar was filled with the stones then the teacher asked is there place in this jar now the children said no teacher there is no place then the teacher asked them bring some pebbles they brought some hundred pebbles and he put them in the gap under then again the teacher asked is there place in this jar now teacher there is no place then the teacher asked bring some sand one kilo of sand then he put the sand in the jar again then the jar was completely full then again the teacher asked is there place in the jar still no teacher there is no place bring one uh, liter of water then she poured into the jar imagine if it had been done in the opposite direction first you pour water fully and fill the jar and then if you put the sand and then if you put the pebbles and then if you put the stone is it possible it is not at all possible you know stephen covey's books are everywhere sold unlawfully reprinted on the footpath and all one of his famous sayings is the main thing is to keep the main thing as the main thing the main thing is to keep the main thing as the main thing there are things that has to be done next year there are things that has to be done next month there are some things that have to be done next week there are some things that have to be done today sometimes we change the price tag the husband is told by the wife come on you are all the time coughing show yourself to the doctor no no today is cricket match i want to watch that only i don't want to go to the doctor your health is more important than the cricket match you should find time after 40 45 you have to go for regular check up do not test the lord your god do not test the lord your god the lord has created all these facilities to examine yourself do not postpone do not procrastinate a group of students went to the supermarket late in the evening suddenly there was a power failure the generator also did not function properly immediately the students wanted to blame this chief they in the darkness changed the price tag what was costing 10000 rupees now costs only 100 rupees what was costing 100 rupees 10000 rupees 
when the power returned there was confusion all around there is confusion in your life when you change the price tags god first family other important work some children are all the time glued to the tv watching the cartoons all the time how much time you can spend a day watching cartoon and cartoon it is good interesting okay but not more than half an hour not more than 45 minutes you have to study you need relaxation in life but all life should not become relaxation priority priority to god priority to your studies priority to your prayer priority to set right your family that's what the lord is asking of you sometimes the middle class people save for a lifetime and then buy a new plot they build a house with some loan also they call me father you have to bless our house invite me for the house warming ceremony what a joy they have after working so hard it's wonderful they have a new house their own house they are so happy even though they are still in the rented house because they have to clear the loans they give it to the lease or something like that but the gospel tells us not only a new house even if you possess the whole of bangalore even if you possess the whole world if you lose your soul what does it profit even if you possess everything and if you lose your soul not to lose your soul only my dear brothers and sisters you have come we should know what is more important you know jesus went to the house of martha and mary martha was busy with preparing so many dishes and she was angry with her sister angry with the lord who allowed her to listen to his word lord do you not care he is finding fault with jesus and the lord said martha martha you are worried about so many things one thing is necessary and mary knows what is necessary she is listening to the word i used to say often we should have the heart of mary and the hands of martha so many people are worried about having the hands of martha only we should have the heart of mary listen to the lord meaningfully do your work my dear brothers and sisters let us know what is more important and what is less important not only in our spiritual life in our everyday dealings with people don't be all the time procrastinating postponing don't give excuses don't go on doing things that you like there are things that you do not like but you have to do may this eucharist give us the necessary grace to set right our priorities amen